Hello everyone, it's Douglas from Other Than Intended Purpose. Uh, this video was actually shot the same day as the War Crime Chunkus video was shot. <laughs> I want, uh, this is the second of two knives that was sent to us by Derek Werning. And I want to get these back in the mail to him because they are, well, they're his. And I don't want him to you know, start wondering where they went. <laughs> so what we have today is the VC Edge Interface number 79. And I spent a lot of time trying to research these online. And apparently the number 79 is not just a serial number, it's that, that he makes each knife gets its own number. And I could not find the exact stats on this, but I found the 78, which has almost identical stats. So we're going off the 78 stats, even though this is a 79. Say so VC Edge Interface is the name. VC Edge is the company. It has a 3.6 inch carbon fiber blade with a M390 cutting edge insert. It has carbon fiber scales and the pocket clip and I believe most of the hardware on this including the uh, the backspacer are titanium. There's a very very little bit of steel in the locking mechanism. The rest of this is carbon fiber. The the blade insert is this is fat carbon with with M390 steel. This weighs 1.55 ounces. This is the anti chunker. <laughs> To say that I opened that box and was like, wow, these are extremes. <laughs> now, it, it does have small pieces of steel for the liner lock, but they're, they're not full length on the scales. They're just enough to make the lock. And this thing does not weigh anything. I'm, I'm sitting here holding it and it feels fake. Except it's really, really not fake. <laughs> this is... a serious piece of knife edge. I've had this the same length of time I had the other one. I've been, I've been doing stuff here in the cave. And luckily, I started doing the research on this one before I, because I was thinking, hey, this one I could actually carry around. The pocket clip's a little shorter than I'm used to, but man, that is almost invisible. Let me grab my handy dandy Kaiser roll. Where in the hell is my handy dandy Kaiser roll? Not being very handy or dandy. There we go. My handy dandy Kaiser roll. need to get another one of these because I, I, I like Kaisers and I keep getting more Kaisers and they don't fit now. <laughs> this is supposed to hold three knives. It holds five knives. But once you've got that in your pocket, it fairly disappears. And because of the weight of it, once it's in your pocket, you forget you're carrying it. But I was thinking to myself when I was looking, I was like, wow, this one I could wear carry around town, use for some stuff. And then I, I started doing the research on it. I hope you're sitting down. I'm going to sit down now because I don't want to be standing up when I say this. $3,300. <laughs> That's a big fat note for me. <laughs> this knife cuts like a dream. Now, I, again, I did not take this apart because, well, I didn't want to risk screwing it up. But I did use it for cutting quite a bit of stuff here in the cave. Um, the entire time, I mean, it, 
it is still sharp enough to give him a bald spot. Yeah, I just I just took hair off my arm <laughs> and a little bit of skin. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll wipe it down before I send it back. There we go. It's all pretty again. But I have used this here in the cave for cutting several different things, including a little bit of food, but it was it was dry food. It wasn't stuff that was going to get it wet. I wouldn't do that. And I can honestly say that this goes, the, the, the geometry on this blade, it is so thin behind the edge. And the transition from the M390 to the, car, the, to the fat carbon is so flawlessly smooth. This went through like a freaking scalpel. It comes down to an extremely, extremely fine point. When you close it, uh, it is smooth enough that it should be drop shutty. The blade does not have enough weight to make it drop. You have to kind of wiggle it to make it drop. But this thing, as it should be for the, for the price, is dead centered. There is absolutely no blade play, no rock, no twist, nothing up and down, nothing side to side. The lock up on it... This is a frame lock, not a liner lock. Liner locks you expect to see 40 to 50 percent. For a flame, fr flame lock, bleh. for a frame lock, seeing 30 percent is actually not bad, and that's about what you got here. Frame locks tend to have thicker pieces of metal for the lock bar. And a little more tension in them because you don't have to worry about pushing them against scales. They're, they're on the outside. The lock on this is smooth. There's the, the detent on it is so tight. Take that up there and use, just pull it out like this. Sounds like you're how many how many how many knives metal. how many knives have you ever had that the detent sounded as crisp as the lockup? <laughs> now, I have a, I have held a lot of knives in my life. I have never had one this size, this light, and every single piece of it is made. To perfection. The machining on this is beautiful. The The edges are rolled just perfectly. I mean, if you go to the inside, you're going to feel a little bit of an angle, but even there it's chamfered just slightly. But the edges are rolled so much that you grab, grab this as tight as you can and squeeze, and there is zero hot spots. You can barely even feel that it's in your hand. When you have it open to cut, bring back the cutting board. When you have it open to cut and you're trying to do the the push cuts, there is there's no rock in your hand. There's there it's very solid grip. I am very rarely speechless. And when I first took this knife out and, and looked at it, I was speechless. And then when I saw what it cost, I was speechless and afraid to touch it for a day. <laughs> I made sure to clean my hands every time I picked it up so I wouldn't smudge it. But this is one that, to a certain extent, at least in my realm of reality, this falls into that same category as being more art. It's just a more functional piece of art. And the reason I say that it's more art is because I would legitimately be concerned with the way I, I use my knives. I use my knives hard. I expect my knives to cut things. I expect my knives to get dirty and wet. 
I expect my knives to sit in my back pocket while I'm sitting in my wheelchair. I would be afraid of scratching it. <laughs> Any of the knives that I carry regularly are scratched. And, and they're not as pretty as this one. I mean, the details on this are just phenomenal. There is a standoff on either side of the backspacer so that you don't have a solid backspacer there. You've got a backspacer with a gap on the top and the bottom held by barrel standoffs. Are those, are those barrels or are they milled part? No, I think those are milled part of it. I think they just milled down barrels into the backspacer. The only branding on this knife anywhere is you have a very small right here that says M390 V and then on the backspacer it says interface number 79. And to own something like this, and I'm fairly certain that Dirk falls into this category, is a collector of art that is vaguely knife shaped. And, and having which one it is on it is actually a nice thing. Some knives you get really big branding and, and on both sides. And, you know, I like having the, the steel on it. And up here on the Ricasso or someplace like that that's a little less obvious, I like having the, the, the model name. Because I've got knives. I can pull out knives right now. It's like, what's that? Um, yeah. I know it's that brand because I know that brand, but I, I don't remember which model it is. And then there's ones like the Beluga that go in the middle. They don't have a huge amount of branding. I have this out because I was just using it. They don't have a huge amount of branding on them. It's got their logo there. Uh, P, PFP01 with K110 steel, Kohler steel. And then instead of having it on a backspacer, it does say Beluga on the on the pocket clip. This is a little less obvious than having it on the pocket clip. I would kind of prefer it didn't have it on the pocket clip because if that's in your pocket, that's sticking out for the world to read. But the craftsmanship on this is amazing. Everything is so tight. There is, it's just, you don't feel friction when you open it. All you feel is a little pressure on the tab and it's open. So when I first did that, the person that was in the room with me at the time thought it was assisted open. It's like, no, that's not assisted open. That's just how smooth it is. So you will probably never see me with another of these particular can set that up. You will probably never see me with another VC Edge knife because I was looking at their webpage and um, they don't really run a budget line. <laughs> but I would like to thank um, Dirk very much for sending these to me. I have had a lot of fun the last week using these, having things that I normally wouldn't have in hand. And... Just thank you guys for listening to me ramble. Wasn't as much of a review of, of testing knife because, well, I, I didn't want to hurt it, so I didn't do any argues. So remember, best, skill, or best tools in the world don't do any good unless you have the skills to work with them. So get out in the woods and practice. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy nature. Do something kind for someone. It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be expensive, and it certainly doesn't have to be, you know, something that would negatively impact yourself. Just something small to bring a smile to someone's face. Be up. Remember, Choo Choo's with us all the time. You guys have a good evening. Good night.